Do you remember when Sam Altman briefly hinted at investing in his very own robotic startup? Well, there's some big news on that front. Take a look. So here's that Twitter post. This is Eric Jang, and he's saying every behavior you see in this video is controlled from pixels to actions with a single neural net architecture. No teleop, teleoperations. This is where another human being controls the robot and kind of guides it what to do. No scripted replay or task specific code. No CGI, all in one continuous video shot. And they have a blog post describing how they did it. Let's take a look at that in just a second. But he's saying over the last few months, we've convinced ourselves that our AI strategy can scale to all kinds kinds of short mobile manipulation tasks and these capabilities can be added by our tele operators who have no formal training in machine learning. We were planning to throw in some coffee making as an Easter egg, but the coffee machine broke right before the film shoot. And it turns out it's impossible to get a Keurig case lemon in Norway via next day shipping. Then he's saying upon further research, it turns out that Keurig case lemon is by far the easiest coffee machine to make coffee with so much so that there are even articulated sim versions of it. So if you're not sure what he's referring to, he's probably referring to the demo by figure AI. So this figure robot that basically opens up a cure coffee thing, puts in the little tab and closes it. The reality is that very often people use this particular machine, this, this coffee maker for demonstrating robotics because of just how simple and easy it is to open and close. And so he's saying, what's next? We're focused on increasing task generalization so they can run unmonitored for longer duration and deal with more scenarios not seen in the fine tuning data. We're also hiring on both the AI team and studio team in Mountain View. Certainly seems like a good opportunity and being that close to open AI, both in terms of where you're working and the physical location, that can't be a bad thing. They even have an Android operator role. They're looking for somebody that has great attention to detail, are creative and highly motivated to make robots do more tasks. So Eric also wrote the book, AI is good for you, which I've heard great things about, haven't read it yet, but definitely, definitely seems like a good read. 
And here's their blog post talking about how they did it. So it's called All Neural Networks, All Autonomous, All 1x Speed. The reason they're highlighting this is because you might have seen a lot of robotic demonstrations recently. And for most people, it'll be hard to differentiate between what's really advanced versus not. Just because a robot can do backflips or run really fast or whatever, that might be cool, but that's not necessarily what a lot of people are working towards. What we're working towards is a general robot, one that is capable of understanding how to interact and solve new, never before seen tasks that can generalize to new environments and new and new challenges, et cetera. So instead of being hard coded by some very smart engineer to do a particular thing, the robot itself is learning and improving how to do it. And of course, all 1x speed just means that, I mean, there's no camera tricks, right? The You're not speeding up how fast it's going. You're not cutting out the, you know, the pauses between when it's taking actions. It's sort of just real uncut, unedited footage. So they start, 1x's mission is to provide an abundant supply of physical labor via safe, intelligent robots. Our environments are designed for humans. So we design our hardware to take after the human form for maximum generality. To make the best use of this general purpose hardware, we also pursue the maximally general approach to autonomy, learning motor behaviors end to end from vision using neural networks. We deployed the system for Eve for patrolling tasks in 2023, and we are now excited to share some of the new capabilities our androids have learned purely end to end from data. By the way, the Eve robots are actually patrolling real buildings at night right now. There's several companies that I believe either purchased or rented them. I'll play a video here that shows sort of like a demo of what that's supposed to look like. You know, they're adding some flair to the demo, but do understand that these things are already making money for the company by being deployed in real world scenarios. The blog post continues. Every behavior you see in the above video, that's the first video that you saw the demo by a single vision-based neural network that emits actions at 10 Hertz. The neural network consumes images and emits actions to control the driving, the arms, gripper, torso, and head. The video contains no teleoperation, no computer graphics, no cuts, no video speedups, no scripted trajectory playback. It's all controlled via neural networks, all autonomous, all 1x speed. To train the machine learning models that generate these behaviors, we have assembled a high quality, diverse data set of demonstrations across 30 EVE robots. We use that data to train a base model that understands a broad set of physical behaviors from cleaning to tidying homes to picking up objects to interacting socially with humans and other robots. We then fine tune that model into more specific family of capabilities, e.g., for example, a model for general door manipulation and another for warehouse tasks, and then fine tune those models further to align the behavior with solving specific tasks like opening this specific door. This strategy allows us to onboard new skills in just a few minutes of data collection and training on a desktop GPU. All the capabilities shown in the video were trained by our Android operators. They represent a new generation of software 2.0 engineers who express robot capabilities through data instead of writing code. Our ability to teach our robots short mobile manipulation skills is no longer constrained by the number of AI engineers. So this creates a lot of flexibility in what our Androids can do for our customers. So if you needed to train something like this for yourself, instead of hiring a very expensive software engineer, somebody with a tech background, it seems like instead you might be able to get someone, even yourself, to kind of mimic the motions needed to complete a task. This would be the data on which the robot is trained. So you'd be able to teach it new skills, how to open the specific doors in your house, how to interact with specific objects in your house, et cetera. And they have two roles. They're hiring AI researchers in the San Francisco Bay Area, and they're also hiring Android operators in both the Oslo and Mountain View offices to collect data, train models with that data, and evaluate those models. Unlike most data collection jobs, our teleoperators are empowered to train their own models to automate their own tasks and think deeply about how data maps to learned robot behavior. If you want to experience what it is like to live in a real life West world, we'd love for you to apply. What's interesting to me here is that, you know how they say, you know, as the AI takes over more jobs, they're hoping that this innovation will create new jobs that, that we haven't really seen before. Well, I mean, certainly this is one of them. You know, the robot whisperer, the robot teacher, you teach robots how to do certain very specific tasks. And it does look like maybe even a huge tech background is not necessary here. They mentioned things like having a good coordination, motor skills, and dexterity. Nice to have is experience with virtual reality and experience within technical vehicles like robots, androids, or drones. So if you've played around with virtual reality, 
have hundreds of hours clocked with GTA and have some experience flying a drone around and want to transition to this exciting new field of robotics. I mean, I feel like if you're in the Bay Area or you're in Norway next to their original headquarters, I mean, like this could be huge for you. All right. I hope you enjoyed that. And I uh, can't wait for one of these to start helping me around the house. Folding clothes to me is like the most annoying task. If I can teach it to do that, I, I, I'd be pretty set. Anyways, my name is Wes Roth and thank you for watching.